Hello, Peter Hewitt, La Artistino, back again with another colouring book review. This one's a bit of a difference. Now, does anybody not recognise these books? These are, of course, the world famous Where's Wally series. They've been around since 1987 and come from the pen of Martin Hanford, who is perhaps the most patient and meticulous artist in the world. Now, if you enjoy looking through these books and finding Wally and all of his friends, this book might interest you, and it is the Where's Wally Colouring Book. This one's just been printed this year by Walker Books, who are also responsible for printing Where's Wally in the UK. Uh, Where's Wally was, of course, printed by Little Brown & Co. in the US under the name of Where's Waldo. So if you've ever had a desire to colour in all these tiny little people in these books, here is your opportunity. Now I'll clear the decks and we'll have a look through this one. The first thing you'll notice when you open the book is you have these flaps on both the inside cover, front cover, and on the back cover too. And they're handy for placing in between your pages so that you've got some protection for the page behind so it doesn't get indented or, or marks on it while you're colouring. The production values are quite high, it's well bound, there's a nice stiff card cover and the inside pages are, are made of quite a good quality paper. I'm quite pleased with it. I was reassured that this paper will take markers quite nicely and indeed it does. So we'll flick through, there is a variety of different pictures. You've got bigger ones here of the whole Wally gang. And then of course you've got the reproductions and some originals of actual pictures from the Where's Wally series. Here you've got one that's very interesting. We've got all different sorts of themes and some very minute little characters to colour in. This book would be absolutely perfect for people who like to spend hours and hours on little details and don't want to worry too much about shading, just like playing with lots of colours. You've got a western themed one. I've seen this one done a few times. These, these are not something that you can just knock over in, in an afternoon, mind you. These are pictures that are going to take you a while to get through, depending on what color, colouring methods you use, but so much fun. I think this is a perfect one to sit down with, say, a, you know, a marathon of your favourite TV series running and just sit and colour away and just drift away into the colouring world. This is one that I've done a bit on already. I've used this page to experiment with some different types of materials to colour in with. Now all these pages come with little parts already coloured. In this case it was these shoots here that are, I don't know what that is, I think it's sucking up the pastry and the, the little bits of butter and the little egg yolks were also coloured in this picture. Everything else was all done myself. And I'll get back to this picture at the end of our walkthrough to show you a few of the methods and things that I recommend but we'll keep going through here's a picture that's a bit less fussy the sky's already been colored for you and you've got this great dragon scene happening here this one a fruit based scene which already suggests you the colors there that you need to use pineapples and apples etc so you don't have to think too hard about your beginning colors I'd color all in the fruit first and then sort of work on all the other individual colors just to add your little highlights There's a dance floor that's already been done for you. Now you've got these other, if you don't want to have a break I should say from, from the smaller pictures or the little fine details, you've got these ones with bigger details that you can play with. If you ever want to try and experiment with different ways to colour faces, this is a great page for it. You've got lots to choose from. Here's another bigger picture. You can do a variety of different designs on the uh, clothing if you like since it's all plain or you can just color it in just one color. Here's some more dragons with some a great background already blacked out for you that'll make your features in the picture pop. There you go that one looks mm, really interesting it's a parade. And here you go, if you want repetition, here's a great one. Here's a Wally's dog all the way through. You can go mad with your red pen. I would use probably a red fine liner for this because there is tiny little details in here. Something like a Stablio or, you know, one of those very fine tipped 
fine liners would probably be the most satisfying to use in here. But have a go, see what you like. He has pirates inside a pirate cave. The variety is just crazy nuts. Here's a spaceship launch. A garden. This looks like a medieval garden by the looks of it, maybe. Dinosaurs! Again, one of the pictures with larger pieces for you to colour in if you want to break from the very tiny people. As you can see, I think just about all these pictures are actually, oh no, hang on, tell me Lars. I was about to say all of them are double sided, but you do have single sided ones as well. There's a spooky castle. Okay, and there's a jungle sort of scene, is it? No? Okay. There's a lot happening in that. Now, why is Wally called Wally in some parts of the world and not in others? Now, Wally is called Wally in his home uh, from where he comes from in the UK. He's also called Wally in Australia, in Brazil, Ireland, Portugal, and South Africa, just to name a few countries. But over in the US, he's known as Waldo. And I've seen quite a bit of debate as to why this is so. But the real reason is just marketing. They just thought that the name would appeal better in different names would appeal better in different countries. For instance, in Germany, he's called Walter. In Norway, he's known as Willy. France, he's Charlie. In Denmark, he's Holger. Israel, he's known as Effie. Sri Lanka and India, he's known as Hetty. And Iceland, he's Valley. And in Sweden, Hugo. Now, that's only the ones I could find. So if you find any other names that he's called, let me know in the comment section below. At the end of this book, of course, you've got the checklist for finding all the different items in the book. <laughs> Wally is a search a find item type style of series, so of course they've included that in this colouring book. And don't look too closely if you don't want to know the answers, but there they all are. With spaces to put other things that you've spotted as well. This is also a good record, you can tick off the ones that you've coloured. And there you go. Now we'll move on to the second part of this review where I'll show you a few techniques for colouring this book. Here I've zoomed in on this little part of this picture that I'm currently working on. As you can see, there's a lot of comedy in these pictures. It's just fun while you're colouring to discover all the new little things that the little Where's Wally people are doing in their Where's Wally world. Now, as I said before, this takes pencil quite nicely. You can go with your high-end pencils or even these Faber-Castell classics are quite good in these, these books as well. So you don't have to go and lash out with expensive pencils. I'll just show you how they do. I'll pick a little man in here and give him a bit of a colour. Pencils lay down, very satisfying. So there's not a whole lot of tooth on this paper, but it's quite sufficient to get a nice smooth looking effect. I can do a little layer of colour there if you want to go darker just go over it again get a nice dark look and this is where it's important to have that um, divider underneath or a piece of paper underneath just so you don't indent the next page. Though this paper is quite tough and I don't think you're going to see a hell of a lot of that. So pencils do very well now we'll move on to markers. I happen to have some cheap, well, budget priced um, connector pens here. Also made by Faber-Castell. I like Faber-Castell products, but you don't have to have Faber-Castell products. There are plenty of other markers that will work beautifully in this book. So we'll choose a color. I'll color some of their faces here. The skin color, I'll just make sure that that's gonna come out the right way. That's a nice skin tone. So we'll just add the colour to their faces and you can spend hours and hours just doing all these little details. Now I recommend that you pick one colour up and then you go over the page and work in a large section and colour in all the details that you want in that colour first. Okay, that's enough pale skin people. Let's see if we go for a darker skin. Can we do? 
let's do this fella here. So that's them, or you can go for your high-end uh, artist-style brush-tipped pens. There's lots of different ones to choose from. Me, I've got the Tombows, they're the ones I use, but there are lots of others that you can use too. So we'll grab one of those and we might start colouring in this cake. So you can spend hours just listening to some music or with a, your favourite television show playing in the background and you would sort of leave it, come back to it, leave it, come back to it and you would eventually get this wonderful complex picture. It certainly gives you a, uh, an appreciation for the people who originally applied all the colour to the Where's Wally books. go. Now you can see we've got some flat colours there but what if you want to sort of spice it up a little bit and give it a bit more dimension. I'll show you how to do that. We'll just move to this area here which I've already mostly completed. Now as you can see one of the problems here is where I've coloured in with the marker and I've used for this the flooring a Tombow marker it's come out a little bit patchy where the marker strokes have overlapped each other and left it not, not quite nice and smooth. Now there is a way to deal with that. What I found if you take a pencil and I've got here a Faber-Castell Classic pencil in a similar colour to these marker strokes and you go over the top of where the marker is you don't have to be particularly dense or hard, you just give it a nice layer. Because you've already got the colour down beforehand, you don't have to be too concerned about a lot of white bits showing through. Like that, and there you go. You get a much smoother looking piece. Does mean going over everything twice but it depends on how good a result you're after. You can just leave the marker as it is or you could do this and get a smoother result and if you see over here where I've been working with my pencil you've got a lovely dense fairly even looking coverage. The next little trick I want to show you is how to get a bit more dimension with some of these little people that are running around. Now a trick that I've found if you want to put a bit of shadow in is to select either a very dark blue pencil or a black pencil and just pop in some shadows just under the arms where the cuffs are to the clothes maybe around the base of the top, maybe around the neck a little bit, anywhere which would throw a shadow, around the back of the legs, and you'll find your little man or your little lady getting a bit more dimension to him. Again, this is a case of just how much you want to do, now how far you want to go. If you do the whole picture like this, it's gonna look pretty stunning. Now I recommend the colours for this is either a, a dark blue, a dark purple, a very very dark grey or even a black. But use the same colour throughout the entire picture and that will sort of bind it all together. You can even do this for the floor as well and put a bit of a shadow down there too. So we pop a shadow under everybody and under any items that are in the picture and it will look like there is, we well, can see here where I've done it, uh, give it a bit more three dimension and it'll ground everything. Finally, the little trick I want to show you uses a white pencil and it needs to be a fairly soft white pencil. So for this I've chosen the Luminance white pencils but I find that the Polychromous pencils are also nice and soft and do the same. The reason you want it soft is because the harder, less translucent pencils won't leave much of a white mark. Well this is quite soft and chalky and will leave a nice white mark. 
But what you want to do, if we can find a pair of legs, let's see, we've got a pair right here. Just run a little highlight down the center of the legs and that will make them look a bit three-dimensional. So if you do that in combination with a bit of shading, that's all you need to do and you've just created a bit more of a lively looking character. It'll look a little bit more professional, a little bit more poppy. Yeah. Just like that. With these metallic surfaces, a quick way to make them look metallic once you colour them is just to take your white luminous pencils and do two little strokes like that. And that'll look like shine on the metal. Very simple, very effective. Finally, if you want to do a little bit more for particularly shiny surfaces, say this loudspeaker here, you can grab hold of a white gel pen. Of course, I'm using my favorite one, which is made by the Mitsubishi Pencil Co. And that is the Uniball Signo. There you go, on his little lid. You can use any one, but I find these ones are particularly good. And you can put a few little dots like that to make things look a bit more metallic. For the metallic things. Okay, now that concludes my hints and tips for colouring in to the next level in this book. I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial slash book review and I'm going to go off now and enjoy my Where's Wally picture and get lost in all these people and see if I can't spot Wally. Okay, and until next time, happy colouring! you're enjoying any colouring adventures that you are currently on and until next time happy colouring! <laughs>